Okay, so, gentlemen, oops, I stole this calculator. Um, what we're looked at so far is we looked at the sine of theta equals one half, and we said, all right, the sine of theta equals one half. We can write that as inverse sine of one half, and we found out our answer was theta equals pi over six. And of course, that brought up some of some speculation of why doesn't it equal those other answers? Why? On the unit circle, we know that sine is also equal to 1 half, right? And then if you wanted to keep on using coterminal angles, you could also say, well, sine of, sine of theta is equal to 1 half at um, 7 pi over 6, right? You could just keep on going on and on and on. Whenever you have a terminal side at these two angles, you're going to have sine is equal to 1 half. So why do we only have one answer? And the one way I want to prove that to you is looking at its graph, all right? Now, we looked over there talking about a, um, the inverse of a quadratic. To write the inverse of a quadratic as a function, we put a constraint on it, correct? We put a constraint on its range to consider it a function. So let's go and take a look at the sine graph and see how this is going to affect it. So if I was going to draw out the sine graph, we'll just do the initial period here. Um, and sine graph goes up to 1, down to negative 1. All right, and we have four critical points, 1, 2, 3, 4, which is pi halves, pi, 3 pi over 2, and then 2 pi. Okay, so then remember we first critical point, down, down, back up. Right, that's what we called our initial period. Everybody follow me with that? And let's actually even go in the, in the negative direction here um, to kind of help us out. So let's actually go, sorry. But I kind of want to get a little representation of what we're going to be looking at. So this would be at negative pi halves, OK? So ladies and gentlemen, um, what we want to look at is you guys can see as this graph kind of goes on and on forever, what we're looking at is when does sine of theta equal 1 half? Well, like we said, sine of theta equals 1 half at pi over 6. It also equals it at 5 pi over 6, right? You guys see how it hits it at those two points? And then is it going to continue again? Right? So there's infinite many answers for. Um, for how many, what our inverse is going to be, right? There's infinite many answers. This graph is going to keep on going on and on forever. So when we want to find the inverse, let's go ahead and graph the inverse to go and see how we can kind of affect this. So if I was going to graph the inverse, remember what I want to do is take a xy value and let's swap it with some other xy values. So let's take a look at this first point. Well, this first point is going to be pi over 2, comma 1. That's my maximum point, right? Pi halves up 1. And then let's take a look at this one, which would be negative pi halves, <coughs> comma, uh, negative 1. All right, now what we're going to do again, remember to find the inverse, you're going to have to reflect it over the xy line. So to reflect something over the xy line, is really as simple as just taking what's over it and then reflecting it over. Actually, that needs a some graphs a little off. And then So do you guys see how the blue line is a reflection of the black line over the dotted red line? Do you guys see how that looks? OK, so let's go and graph this, though, on a different set of axes um, so we can see it a little bit more cleanly. So what we notice is um, if I was going to reflect these new points, if I'm going to be reflecting them, it's very similar, but we're actually going to have different cases. Because now I'm using 1 comma pi over 2. So it's going to be very similar when you reflect, but it's not going to be an exact. Because if you notice, my x value only goes over to 1, doesn't go over to pi halves. So I, it's similar, but it looks like these are the same points. They're not going to be the same points. I'm just using my reflection, OK? But we've noticed if I, if I swap the x and the y coordinate, 
I'm now going to have 1. And then I have to go up to pi halves. And let's just say pi halves is right here. And then I'll go down to negative 1. And then over to negative pi halves. So what we notice is our graph is now going to look something like this. Okay, and that's just this section right here, right? Now, right now, if I just graph that first section, is this a function using that vertical line test? Yes. Now, let's go ahead and continue the function because remember, this graph goes on and on and on forever, right? So if I just reflect it over, it should go on and on and on forever as well. Right? Now, here comes our problem. When we looked at the graph, I said, what is the, what is the angle when sine equals 1 half? So what you could do is you could look at this. If here's your sine function, and I could probably, it's a little rough. But if you said at 1 half, all right, you said, OK, here's pi over 6. Right? At sine of pi equals pi equals 1 half 6. If I go and find 5 pi over 6, which would be right here, do I now have a, do I still have a function? No. no. So do you see how we're not, why we can't calculate the, the angle 5 pi over 6? Because if we go ahead and try to find that angle, or we include the angle 5 pi over 6, now we're, our inverse function is not, it's not going to be a function. It's not going to be a part of it. So we're only going to include we're only going to include, when we're finding the inverse of sine, we're only going to include ones that fall within the range of pi halves, I'm sorry, that's negative pi halves, between negative pi halves and pi halves. So when we're looking at angles, when I say what angle for sine equals 1 half, the only angles that you can give to me are angles that are between negative pi halves and pi halves. Because if you go outside of this range, we don't have a function anymore. Does that kind of make sense? A little bit? OK, so that's why theta is going to equal pi over 6. That's why it does not equal 5 pi over 6, or 7 pi over 6, or all those other answers that we were able to figure out. All right? It only, the, the range of the inverse is restricted to negative pi halves and pi halves. All right? Yes? Yeah, all I did, I mean, kind of like that. I know it's a little bit, I know it's a little tricky, but yeah. All it is, I took this graph and I reflected it over this x, y line. So yes, think of like taking it this way and then making it vertical. All right, any last questions on this? No? Good? Kind of? Okay. So, I do that long little lecture.